In order to understand the shortwave infrared spectrum, we first need to look at the visible spectrum. I'm wearing a currently issued US Army camouflage jacket to show how this can blend in reasonably well to the background here. We've already established that our material functions in this spectrum, and at one point I hold the shield with the material close enough that you can see me through it. When we switch to the near-infrared spectrum, or near, the camouflage is significantly brighter than the background and you're no longer hidden to an enemy using the standard military night vision optics. I've used infrared lights to illuminate this area, and while it makes the camouflage stand out, our material is still bending the infrared light at this part of the spectrum. Going deeper into the infrared spectrum, the shortwave infrared or SWIR night vision is usually limited to elite special forces teams due to the high cost of these night vision optics which can run in the tens of thousands of dollars per unit. This is because the majority of camouflage inks and colors don't function in this spectrum, allowing the special forces to easily identify the enemy at night. Their laser designators and aiming lasers also operate in this frequency, allowing only for their equipped forces to see them, as the opposing forces are unlikely to have these SWIR optics capabilities. As you can see, the material is bending the shortwave infrared spectrum. New fully digital night vision devices allow for daytime use as there's no intensifier tube that can be damaged by sunlight or bright lights. This can easily identify certain camouflage patterns that may function well in the visible spectrum, but don't function well in the infrared spectrum. 